Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com. Out here for another gear review, and today talking chronographs. This guy right here by Magneto Speed. Before we dive into this right here, a little bit of kind of the why. So why would you need a chronograph? Well, a number of different reasons. One, if you are hand loading, it can be very useful to know the velocities you're coming up with on those hand loads. So hopefully you do not get to a dangerous point. But one of the other kind of more important things with respect to kind of how I've used this is it gives you usable data. And so once you actually end up with a muzzle velocity, there's a whole number of different apps you can use, ballistic apps, where you essentially build out a profile for your gun as far as barrel length, like optic height, all of those different things. And then when you put in the bullet you're using as well as the muzzle velocity, does all of the magical math and tells you what to dial for different distances, whether MOA or mil, which is really handy. And so this came about. Friends over at Shooting Surplus sent it out probably about two years ago now. I've used it a lot since then. And yeah, I had used one, I think once or twice before I got this. And I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. And finally got it and just continue to use it on honestly most every gun now and so yeah it's pretty handy i'll show you what comes in it and as a quick aside something that i actually hate about this whole thing is the box it's got me so many times so finally i ended up actually marking it top because you would think the other side was the top it is not and so we open this up this piece always falls but it's easier if that piece falls rather than all of this stuff falls onto the other side. And so inside here, we have our cable right here, which connects our magneto speed, this bayonet right here, to this computer right here. And then over here, we have a number of different, basically spacers. So some of these are hard plastic, and then two of these, a thin one and a thicker one. And then those are varying sizes there. But these are probably like a high temp silicone, something like that. Basically, I usually put them in between one of these spacers and the actual barrel or can, depending on what I'm putting it on. And yeah, that is kind of all. Of, oh, yeah. And this piece that always falls out is basically for measuring, making sure you have standoff so you don't shoot this bayonet. Setup is pretty straightforward on these. Only takes a minute to just set these things up on whatever gun you're gonna chronograph. Basically on this piece here, it interfaces with, again, depending on what you need, the silicone piece keeps it from like sliding around and grooved on the bottom, marries up with those. And then of course, if you need to move this up or down, you have these spacers, I guess just move it down. And then those spacers line up again, those notches. So you have that silicone piece. So it's not gonna move around on you when you're breaking shots. You don't want this thing sliding out or back. So once you put it over, figure out kind of whatever spacers you need, and then you'll run the strap over, cinch it. And then once you've cinched it, you have this piece so you can turn it, basically make it even tighter. So it's really snug on there. And then, the important part, which I think is usually misunderstood, is actually gauging it. And so I say usually misunderstood. As I mentioned earlier, I used one of these like once or twice. Someone had one, used it. I'm like, ah, it's pretty cool. And I remember them, and pretty sure it's a pretty common mistake. People try to put this inside the muzzle to see the bullet path. That's not what this is for. So basically this will rest on top here and you'll slide it back. And so what you want is to make sure that, again, the bullet path is not gonna be hitting this. So as long as the top of this is basically at or around the end of the muzzle, like where the bullet is coming out, then you have that, whatever it is, quarter inch or so of space and you're good to go. You will not shoot this bayonet. As far as this computer piece to it, on the back here, there's a door, it takes one nine volt battery, 
I've used this thing a lot. I don't think I've ever actually changed that battery. And this turns off and on automatically. The way that happens is doesn't really matter which. This side has an angle to it. This side is straight. You can put it in either one. But once you connect both of them, it will turn on. Bam. And then it basically tells you, hey, the default setting you're set to, whatever sensitivity, and you can scroll through menus and it's gonna basically bring up whatever your last series of shots that it recorded. And then when you come in here, hit that menu button, you have go back, archive series, delete a shot, set sensitivity. You can do, oh yeah. And if we go down, we do have more options. Reset series to one, clear series shots, view archive data, battery state menu. And data checker menu, operating modes, set feet per second or meters per second, switch SD, ES, and memory card functions, set backlight mode, reset system. Lots of things on here. For my own part, when I turn this on, I'll usually go to archive series, boom, success, hit any button, hit it again, and now it's zeroed out. So you can go ahead and shoot however many rounds you want and start collecting data. Then to gather your data, you basically shoot your string of however many rounds you want. Something I will say, pay attention to, especially the first couple times you use it, as you kind of figure it out, is make sure it's picking them up. Sometimes you can get a error where it's not picking up the signal. That can happen, one, maybe your sensitivity is too low, or you'll have this set up because you're like, I don't want to shoot it. And so you'll have it way too far away. And so again, use that guide rod, make sure it's where it needs to be, and yeah, you're good to go. And when you shoot your string of how many rounds, I usually shoot about five rounds to give me kind of my average speed across those five rounds. You can shoot obviously more than that. Probably don't really want to shoot less than that. And when you do that though, just something to be aware of too is your point of impact is going to be different. Reason being, this is hanging off the end of our suppressor or our barrel, changing those harmonics. So I would not use this to get zeroed or confirm zero. Usually, honestly, I'll just shoot at steel because I'm like, cool, I'm gonna get some value out of these rounds, but I'm not trying to like pinpoint something on paper because it will change your zero. And kind of along the lines of zeros, this actually comes, all those different attachments, pretty much most barrels, suppressors, things like that, it'll attach to, does a really good job. If for whatever reason you have a barrel that has some crazy extreme taper at the end, and this being flat, it won't basically line up. It'll kick this thing up into the path of the bullet. Don't do that. Magneto Speed actually makes an attachment. And if for some reason you have like a quad rail, they actually make a Picatinny adapter for this as well. And there have since been a number of aftermarket companies that have made pretty cool things that will basically attach this either on some sort of like cantilevered arm so you can attach it to your chassis rather than the barrel. Like it'll go on to like an arc adapter or something like that. And you can basically move this up to where it's where it needs to be in front of the barrel or can if you're running a can. And then there's no tension whatsoever on your barrel. So when you have one of those setups, you can actually zero your gun while gathering data, which is really handy, especially when you're shooting something that's like two or three bucks around. Which brings me to how have I used it? How is it done for me? Well, I've used it a lot. Pretty much use it on any gun that has either an optic that I can dial as far as elevation, whether it's MOA or mills, or any optic that actually has usable reticle with like subtension in mills or MOA. Because this allows you to basically get first round hits at distance. And how does that work? Well, first of all, when you use this, it gives you your muzzle velocity for that ammo and your gun. And you're like, ah, it says on the box that this is the muzzle velocity, which is true probably for like a 26 inch barrel, their barrel. 
and yeah, they're going to use the longest barrel possible because it's going to give them the most muzzle velocity possible so that they can print it on the box. Your, like the reality of your muzzle velocity, probably be south of whatever's posted on that box. But once you get a good solid muzzle velocity, then through the use of a ballistic app, like Applied Ballistics, something along those lines, as I mentioned, you create a profile, whatever your gun setup is, and then within that, choose your bullet, choose your muzzle velocity, and gives you all the data. That right there is incredibly amazing and really valuable, especially depending on the caliber you're shooting. One, saving yeah, time and money. So the other way you basically gather that data is getting your dope data of previous engagements. We basically go out and shoot at 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards, as far as you can shoot on paper. And you basically figure out what your come up is for each of those distances, which is great if you have a ton of time and a ton of money for ammo, because bam, I know exactly what it is, at least at that elevation with kind of your atmospherics at that point in time. This gives you your muzzle velocity so a computer can do all that math for you. And not only is it gonna give you your 400 yard dope come up, but it'll also give you 435 yards. Again, it'll give you those, like depending on the app, like five yard increments for everything out as far as you wanna shoot, which is really handy. Again, saving money and saving time. And it has been really valuable. One, just getting that information and then obviously go prove it out as far as like, hey, is this data giving me the correct come up? And yeah, prove it out at distance, steal, whatever you may do. And then yeah, you basically have all of your holds for however far you want to shoot. So by way of example, this came into effect this, I don't know, maybe a month and a half ago as of filming this was down hunting with my boys, my oldest son, Jada, 13. And he's like, dad, 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 there's a deer. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, it's a buck. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm excited for you, like, do your thing. So he took his laser rangefinder, ranged it, opened up the app, figured out, hey, it's this far, saw what the come up was, dialed his come up on his optic, got out, threw down his tripod, put his gun in. I'm like, are you sure you don't want to get in a more comfortable? He's like, no. I'm like, are you sure you're stable? We have time. He's like, no, I'm good. Cool. Breaks his one shot. Deer walks, I think like, I don't know, three or four steps, falls down, dead. 400 yards, or I think it might've been 380. Have to double check with them. But this allowed that. We basically had a bunch of ammo that was worked up through unknown munitions for them. And even if it was factory ammo, that muzzle velocity was not gonna be whatever it said it was. Cause one is an 18 inch, uh, 243 and again probably chronographing off like a 24 inch barrel and then on top of that though we ended up with basically custom loaded ammo for it and so this gave us the exact muzzle velocity for his ammo put it in there computer does the magic and bam one shot deer for the freezer if you do shooting at distance with precision this can be invaluable giving you the potential for first round hits coupled with some sort of ballistic app. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Is this cheap? No, not really. You can get it through places like shooting surplus. I want to say about 400 bucks. Is it expensive? Depending. So if you have like a one hunting rifle and you shoot one load, like Remington core locked or something like that, I would not go spend $400 to get muzzle velocities for that ammo. Granted, that ammo, whatever it says on there, probably not true to your gun, but I would actually go borrow a friend's magneto speed and use theirs. Get that information. If, however, you have a number of different guns, different calibers, constantly shooting different ammos, different lots of ammo, or work up loads, if you're in a hand loading, this becomes an invaluable tool. At which point, 
yeah, four hundred dollars, like it's a pretty good deal versus going out with fill in the blank gun load and gathering data for that one gun at all of these different distances. Like it's a lot of time and money invested in ammo. And eventually you hit that point where you far surpass that four hundred dollars, especially if you value your time. But if you're interested, there'll be a link down below. You can go check it out. And last but not least, if you appreciate my content, want to support it, greatly appreciate it, whether it's liking and sharing videos or supporting me directly through Patreon. All that stuff helps me go out and create more content for you. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.